curious at what role everyone is going to be playing here. So it is going to be the Galio going into the mid lane. I wasn't sure if they were going to flex that into the support position when they were hovering the Jace, but looks like they're going to be sticking to this Langshing. Trying to hold this as long as he can. Peanut's going to move so on good. in. Natural has just started an engage as Peanut arrives. This is terrible timing for him. One more auto would proc the Brittle, but it's going to go Ooh. down. Flash from Peanut just to guarantee this kill. First blood like for Peanut. Maybe Cassidy wins this lane post six. I don't know. You tell it's me, Lyric. I'm no analyst. definitely <laughs> not supposed to go <laughs> like this. Yeah, this is why we've been talking about like having pro view of these laning phases to actually see how they go. Yeah, I'd love to be able to get a, a closer look, but it's going to be first dragon of the game going the way of DMO here. And, you know, we talked about the compositions. LGD don't actually want to be fighting just yet. But they might have to, because Shiei went in with his Rift Walk. Xiaopeng is here. Ignite is taking collateral damage. Is just going to clip him. Topside traits. Suki and Helper have moved into the mid lane. Ooh, Rift Walk just gets through, but there's a dredge land and a taunt. Everything lands, and Helper gets the kill. Or the pick. They know that this is how their composition works. Ooh. Another arrow and another hit going straight down onto Shie. Even with Rift Walk, he can't escape. And yet again, it's Helper to grab the kill. Yeah, and I feel like DMO here should just drop Herald and turn towards the Dragon. And you know what? It feels great for Helper because it's so often when you're playing Ash, you don't often get the kills, especially early on in the game. You don't do that much individual damage per auto. As well as Demo spot lane, right? Having the early push to make so many plays across the map. Top lane just been on an island, like a which... A lot of people expect. Everyone's starting to stack up to this top side as Twyla could be in trouble in the mid lane. Ooh. Nice! Knock up on a peanut, but the flash kick keeps him in the fight. Now he's going to be rooted by the final chapter, taken down as Shie grabs himself. They're stuck in lane, collecting the waves, right? They're in a kind of set, fixed location. Xiaopeng opting not to use the Rift Herald for this top lane tower, because they can just they're, really sin. they're not even setting it up, actually. Oh, <laughs> Well, they're just going to try and brute force this one. Taunt onto Peanut. Final chapter used before the minion wave is here. In the meantime, we've got to dive in the bottom side as well onto Lang Xing. They're going to try and finish this one off. Twyla going to be locked up and finished off. In the end, Xie gets the kill. It's a trade across the map. Natural happily walks away from the turret as well with Rift Herald being dropped. This is going to be a trade of objectives here. LGT might be committing to a second tower. Yeah, but still, they don't actually have any resource to push that down with. You could just have one member recall and probably save it. I'm pretty sure Natural can match them with the Rift Herald. He is a Camille. He's got a drive force. Yeah, you're right. So, actually, if anything, DMO might be able to take this inner turret compared and to Shie. Okay, Natural's not going to commit to that one. Shie's not going to commit in the top side. And in the meantime... Well, Munch, I feel like you just saved him. <laughs> the caster curse working in reverse. <laughs> the caster blessing. Uh, Natural's in trouble. Just about dodges everything. Very nicely done. Flash, hook shot away as well. Ooh. No, gets the stun on Peanut. Nearly turned it around. But Yumi says no. Yeah, still. Oh, but I actually don't feel like Demo are too concerned with this one. Yeah, they're going to take a tier two in the mid lane instead. Question mark ping. Let's go for straight up DPS. Ooh, LGD have decided it's time to fight. It's time for this composition to come online. But Shie is taunted. Zonya's to block a lot of the CC. Final chapter not really going to commit. It's only onto Mitsuke, but knocks off everyone on the team and dredge line out. Natural threatening Peanut in the back line in the meantime. And LGD's engaged, not really paying off, but Peanut's going in to try and make something happen. Galio is too late to the party, and Twyla knocked up and finished off. Shie with yet another kill. Now Kramer jumps over the wall and gets a solo kill for the double. Yep, and uh, by the time the Galio ultimate came through, he was already dead. And so. it, it didn't matter regardless, because I feel like even had Twyla gotten there, the other members weren't close enough to follow up with damage. And at that point, Kramer is getting the free hit. Shie is able to do whatever he wants. So LGD going to stop Soul going over to DMO. And I mean... Uh, straight up 5v5 like this. And uh, I think LGD realized that as well. Langshin goes to Call of the Forge God. Knock up onto Helper, though. Final chapter quite in the right direction. Helper gets to free shot for a while. Peanut stunned up. Ooh. Oh, he had a stopwatch to keep himself safe. Galio ult to keep everybody away, and Kramer just can't get into the fight right now. Mitsuki is Ash well. is great at dealing with that. Yeah, exactly. And Twyla's in trouble. Gets a taunt onto Shie, who jumps back out of the fight, launching the target for now. Natural goes down already. They've got to get onto Shie, but Helper has already been deleted. Xiaopan collateral damage isn't enough because there's a cat on his shoulder and another double for Kramer. And oh, Peanut, it's a triple. Peanut didn't even have to be there. LGD just went to Drake as a four-man, found the opportunity to jump onto DMO. DMO's comp is very, very ultimate-reliant, and they don't have those ultimates up. 
And uh, well, now they're just going to charge down the mid lane. And is this over? Maybe. There's honestly. no way this is over. Are they actually? Well, they've got 20 seconds to just brute force this one in. No, they're going to decide against it in the end. I thought they were going to go for it for a second there. Marshables, please respect professional League of Legends teams. What was that in the mid lane, and that's what happened. Yes, uh, LGD have got based on that last team fight lyric. Yeah, yeah, it is enough. Hey, it but was enough for we have LGD. ultimates up back on the side of DMO, but Helper has no flash, so it's an immobile carry. That is, you know, a big thing to look for. Yeah, we need to see some kind of miracle arrow at this point. We need to see Natural finding a good target. Obviously, Shia, oh. he can only jump around if he's able to. Oh, Mitsuki is in trouble. Natural and can stop Shia from dancing around the fight. But Natural's ultimate. not here, so it, he can't stop anything. I'm just saying theoretically. Like, I'm trying to give some kind of hope here for DMO. And Longxing's just stopping him. Longxing says, hey, I don't need to be there. My team can win up 4v4 straight up regardless. Oh, Never no. mind, they're not saying that. <laughs> Why do you need this kill? Why not just end the game? <laughs> she ate teleport. moves all over the map. I mean, it wasn't that fast, though. It was like four kills. I would say it was pretty consistent minutes. though. Like it'd be like, let's say one play per every, you know, two to three minutes. Yeah. I give you that. She is just gonna chase Xiaofeng. She is just playing solo queue. He's just running around getting kills at this point. He's so fed. Helper just about dodges away from the knockup, but exhausted and finished off. And I think that's gonna be just about everything on this one, Lyric, because everybody's falling down. Helper's gone. Xiaofeng's gone. A third inhibitor is about to go down, and Shie is literally close to diving the fountain. He's happy to go underneath these Nexus Towers. Natural trying to CC him. They might just be able to finish off the Kassadin. Nah, <laughs> maybe not, to be honest. They're just going to continue to rock and roll this one through. 16 to 5, and a dominant win here from LGD as soon as they hit that 2 iron bar. <laughs> I like that you had the caveat. It's like a dominant game over you, Ox. Syndra versus that Trundle Silas. But then Leona locked in for Mark. This is something we've seen him play a ton in the past. Which has an 84% win rate right now. Yeah. Getting to the, the really serious games. And hang on, we've got a fight on our hands here. Kramer's in trouble. Bear in mind, Summoners are already running out here. Xiaopeng is low, and that's going to be first put to Kramer. How on earth are they winning this one as Helper forced away? The frozen Domain in the Pillar is enough to get in those 1v1s. Could have a 2v1 at this point. We'll revisit the jungle talk in a minute because Natural has to flash away. Does dodge the second knockup and his world ender gives him movement speed, but everybody's arriving. Peanut has a lot of damage. Collateral damage, though, won't be there yet. Lang Sheng flashes to finish off that the way away from him. I kind of, I, I do want to revisit the, the conversation, though, about, about Trundle and Grace. I, uh, we're never going to have yet. time. We're never going to have time. She is in trouble now. He's going to be chased on down and easily finished off. Xiaopunk barely survives. Like, Xiaopunk being there. So overall, slight advantage for LGD. Yeah, yeah you're kind of arguing for me here, <laughs> Lyric. I'm not going to lie. Nice <laughs> pillar from Xiaopunk to deny the charge from Langxing. Natural knocked up, though, and Peanut is there to finish this kill off. Langxing with a second. About kill all, the thing that stood out to him was the Braum play, so a lot more of a defensive stick yeah. with your AD carry sort of support. Which, can obviously, you can be individually etc. TP actually going to be pulled from Ooh, Natural. Double TP. And suddenly we have a whole team in the bottom lane. DMO pulling a playoff. They're looking for Kramer, and he is removed Longxing. from the play. Longxing could have passed towards Dragon right now, and LGD could have just secured a second one. Marcus found Xiaopeng in the jungle, though, and Solar Flare's there. That's <laughs> a lot of damage from this team. And this cat ain't so happy when she's alone. There's a double kill for Shie, and the Infernal Drake has just spawned. Ultimately, that just feels like a mistake from DMO because you think about it, they're posturing on the bottom half of the map like they want to look for a dragon, but Natural is the one pushing top. Natural can rotate, and hopefully Longxing will show on the wave, but they're doing both at the same time. And by the way, Kramer has got himself every single turret play in the B5. top five. Where they, where V5 drafted that Cassiopeia into like the long range, or oh Kindred. <laughs> that is, LGD wins so well, I'm sorry, time. LGD are busy trying to convince me otherwise. That they are. Xiaopeng knocked up final chapter across the team, but the troll's already gone down, and Twyla will escape with his life here. Uh, Lang Xing is slightly drunk, so he knocks the ram the wrong way. And uh, now Gravitum onto Helper, who is feeling the wrath of the Aphelios. Flash forward from Kramer, who 
does not like Ezreal's, apparently. Ultimately, much. I'm going to give you very basic analysis. If DMO are ever standing in front of LGD's comp, LGD are just going to win the fight. I love how Langsheng literally altered the complete... What, what is natural this? natural doing? Oh, no. Oh. DMO, they've completely mental boomed. I was going to say, no one's showing on the waves. They don't respect it. Natural still sticks in the bot lane, and then... Uh, Oh my god, CA. Oh, he plays the brush camp by himself, even escapes with his life, and now the solar flare natural is going to be locked up and finished off as well. Oh, so it does have a good amount of sustain, actually, with the Yumi. Maybe it could survive this one and turn it around. Peanut barely escapes. Ignite is there, though. And they just can't quite finish off any LGD. See him on Camille regularly. He has really, really highlight moments. It's, well, and even this game. It was close. It was close for the first 10 minutes. We saw DMO making set plays. But then there's always one moment which leads to a chain of events. Just keep talking. That just... The game... Where does the game go? I don't even know at this point. We're at 20 minutes and LGD are just doing... It. I mean, they're doing whatever they want. They're walking underneath towers at this point. Harold used to get the tier two in the mid lane. In the meantime, this tier two will and look, fall on the just, bottom side as just well. Just look at the face cam of Twyla right now. Like, that does not look like a guy who's having fun playing League of Legends. With Gen G and just didn't have a great split for himself. He kind of needs a team that'll work for him now. And I mean, we got a we got a fight here. I'm gonna be honest. We're at the point where DMO really don't have many options. The, ga the game at this point is dictated by if LGD enacts some kind of throw, but... Uh, it's possible, but uh, Kramer's not looking to make that happen on the Aphelios. Natural forced away. Uh, Shie, he has the skill button. It's available. He's going to outskill. Oh, the mechanical... You still have Bless on the bench if they want to enact some kind of change, but they consistently try that every split now. It doesn't really do anything. At least to recognize... Okay, that Twilight's going in for this one, actually. Shie is going to be fine. <laughs> Just Continue. realize that there were for a new side, gig. You know, you make a good point. I'm just saying for some career advice, maybe it's another play. Anyway, anyway, the LGD are gonna push into the base. They have lots of damage. They have a call of the Forge God. They can look to dive these inhibitor turrets at any time. And DMO, they need hope for a mirror. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. They need Kramer to. I mean, honestly. Kramer's a failure, so he probably could just dive the Nexus Towers and still be fine. Solar Flare doesn't quite land a stun, but actually, Lanshing is taken Ooh. down at the start of this fight. Maybe this is it. Mark goes very deep, has a stopwatch. Twyla doesn't quite have the damage, and he'll fall, and suddenly, maybe I got a little excited. Maybe I forgot about the ginormous gold lead, and maybe I forgot that LGD are going to close this one out in style here. Natural does survive on the fountain. Scatter the weak onto everyone. Shie playing with his food. There's another kill going the way of Kramer as uh, Peanut jumps onto the fountain, falls down. It's going to be a 2 0 in the end. LGD finish out strong. If you're an LGD fan, Peanut for sure was a superstar coming to this roster. Yeah. Kramer was a good player, right? He was on Flash Rules, was on Africa, yeah. came in, really showed some star level performances on LGD, but. Not, not exactly a superstar. No, like internationally famous. Exactly, yeah. right? Long Xing as well has been criticized by everyone for years. I'd say a bit unjustly so to a degree. Mark hailed as a good player, but once again, doesn't exactly have that reputation. So she feels... Shie, though. Shie decent. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Shie being known as one of the best mid laners in LPL for years. So it's just kind of nice that you bring all these kind of obscure parts that did work in ways on their teams together, and it does make some kind of uniform system that is... Undefeated. Yeah, so far so good for them. They've beaten E Star, they've beaten V5, and importantly for them as well, every other series has gone to three games, even against, well, I guess V5 have, have stepped it up this split, but now against DMO, when they are the favorites, getting a clean 2 0, I think was quite important for them to be able to just say, look, against the bottom teams, we are going to make it look easy because we are a top team in the LPL. And the thing that's nice is they. I always think it's important to show that you can play from behind for a team because think about it, in scrims, it's very easy to get practice of playing from ahead. It's, you know, you, you play out the game that way. It's like kind of yeah. natural League of Legends where when you are behind, I'd say especially a lot of teams in scrims do tend to, you know, kind of end yeah, early, just yeah. go next. And it's an important skill for a top team to have. It definitely is. And one thing I've just noticed on the damage charts here, natural exactly 10,000 damage. So he may have run it down.
but at least he got a nice looking statistic out of it. <laughs> oh God, I don't think. And if that ain't a silver lining, I don't know what is, Larry. I don't think that makes him feel better. <laughs> On the side of LGD, damage damage numbers don't matter. They they just kind of steamroll Demo as a team, and again, it's looking great for LGD going forward. Yeah. The thing is, there's there's good signs. This could be a team that. Again, four world slots this year, right? LGD are clearly vying for one of them. For LGD's opponents, I do still think there are kind of cracks in the armor that when you dissect their games, there are areas you can attack. So there is still room for LGD to improve. Okay, so where where, where are those cracks then? I'm going to put you on the spot here. Like if I'm an FBX, a JDG, a top esports, what is it that the game plan has to be to try and pull some of these weaknesses So apart. despite the fact that I feel like they're set up on objectives, especially their recall timings and their vision setup is very well, we saw against Victory 5 and even in Game 1, these players are still very prone to making execution mistakes. In their Game 3 against Victory 5, we saw Mark constantly engaging without the right setup from Long Xing. And they look very dependent on Long Xing in a lot of these team fights to me that again, can be punished. Especially, we even saw in that game where there was one dragon fight, Long Xing opted to just walk straight top instead of heading towards dragon, where you're an Orn, your composition is based around fighting yeah. for these neutrals. Arguably, that's not what you should be doing. I, kind of a similar thing with Mark as well. You talked about him going a little overzealous. We saw one of the fights where Kramer was clearly focusing on the turret, did not want to be a yeah. part of it, and Mark just went all in. I mean, it was fine. Like, nothing happened off the back of it, but he used his Ignite. He did. He exactly. thought that Kramer was going to be there to, to follow up. The on thing the is, right, there's glimpses there of where they're not coordinated, they're not on the same page. There are just mistakes like we saw yeah. from Shie in Game 1, so there are places where you can find advantages over LGD. Yeah, so there are potential ways for them to uh, be exploited by some of the top teams and potential things that they need to start working on across the course of the split, but definitely a happy day for LGD fans. And the, the real big question now is, at what point can you start putting faith in LGD? Because I know there's a lot of people that have been fans of this organization for a lot of years at this point, and it's one of those organizations that people are nervous to believe again. It's like the thing, so we've seen them up against V5, and to me, V5 looks like it's going to be a middle-tier team, V5 and Sooning are kind of where I would have expected LGD to be after their performances. So the, ne the next kind of echelon of teams, I'd say to me, is WE and EDG. So I want to see how they perform against them because that's going to be a big tell, right? If they come out over W and EDG, we're now moving on to the, you know, RNGs, FPXs, IGs of the world. And, you know, how does LGD stack up against them? You put RNG above W and EDG right now? It's hard, That's right? kind of a, I don't know. It's I hard. Don't hey, we saw two very dominant series out of them, but... Uh, we also saw a really yeah, bad we did. series yes, out we did. of them. So. It's hard right now. Like, gauging LPL teams after one and a half weeks of play. Exactly. Yeah. There, there's still a lot to be played, but out of this play here today, it's going to be Shia grabbing himself the MVP out of the game. And, you know, fair play to him managing to grab that one on the Syndra 9, 1, and 7. I feel like he maybe could have got it in game number one, honestly, on the Cassidy as well, but kind of ran it down in there a little bit. Like, that one would have been <laughs> a bit... But later on in the game, he looked great. Would have been a bit hard to justify, but uh, <laughs> this one, 40% damage, did his job well, abused the mistakes that DMO were making, and... And <laughs> just oh. hunted natural. Yeah, yes, he just. did. I mean, natural kind of hunted Shie, and Shie just kind of said, you know, okay. thanks, bro. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, we, we can do this again if you yeah. want. Like, I've already killed you twice, like two minutes ago, but sure. Yeah, I mean, Shia oh had, had fun this game. He I was think able all to of LGD looked Syndra. like they were having fun. Yeah, and I mean, especially when you've got this kind of composition with an Orn with a Leona. As Syndra, you get to just do what you want during the fights. They're going to go in, they're going to tank everything up, and you can just throw out your orbs. I like that you're ending on like this draft talk because we started at the start of the day with how their drafts look so good, right? They have a very clear team identity. They play around power picks quite well. We constantly see the Orn, we see the Syndras, the Ezreals, and I'd say these comps are just so easy to execute, it's hard to go wrong, and I love that they're sticking to that. Yeah, it's working so far for them. It's a third series win in the books for LGD. DMO still need to go back to the drawing board and see what they can rustle up for the rest of the split, but we're going into our second series now. Do not go anywhere, because after the break, we're jumping into Top Esports up against OMG, and we'll see if Top Esports, right now they're looking like one of the very best teams in the entire world. We'll see if they can keep that form on top.
，人马绕后了，这个位置看起来还可以。哎，火点中装，定到了这边的 Wink Wink 加了一个秒秒，躲了一个精准弹，精准弹。我们后面的话，人马进场效果非常爆炸，直接控制到了三个人，瞬间后排全慢掉了。转瞬即逝。打得好，到我来，拜拜。但后面有一个 TP， 这样的话，威武在这边形成了一个复杂战。小来了，哇，小东北的支援太神奇了。开博这边交出自己的闪现，但是四兄弟被憋在了这里，蛇皮也来了。呃，但这四兄弟的撤退可以往右边。小东北怎么办？小东北可能要被卖了。小东北先这一波躲开了一个勾。你不想玩吗？我会逼你的。小东北在边想又换一个，怎么说？操作、哦、坏掉了小东北，果然想操作。